is Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement or how to buy consulting services. You'll get tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and managing the consulting. And now your host, Ellen Lafitte. Welcome back to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only trusted podcast for insight into the world of consulting procurement. My name is Elaine and I am your host. In today's episode, we are going to delve in deep into the fundamental of consulting pricing and particularly the rates. So before I get into today's discussion, do you remember our chat last week about asymmetrical information? So it's a sneaky little concept where one party holds more information than the other, turning negotiations into a game of poker where only one side knows the rules. Well, when it comes to consulting costs, this is where the plot thickens. You know, um, consultants with their slick presentation and their jargon-filled proposal often have the upper hand. They know their costs down to the penny, understanding their margin, and have a pretty good idea about how much wiggle room they have for negotiation. Meanwhile, you're sitting there trying to make heads or tails of it all, wondering if there's a secret decoder ring that everyone but you knows about. This asymmetrical information is precisely why understanding the ins and outs of consulting costs isn't just helpful, it's critical. It's about evening out playing field. So when a consultant confidently claims, this is the standard rate for your industry, then you can counter with, well, interesting, but here what I know about industry average and your competition's pricing. We're not just talking about getting a fair deal here. We're talking about empowering you with knowledge so that you can negotiate. And you can do that from a position of strength. No more feeling like you're shooting in the dark. It's about shining a light on those hidden corners while the details of cost and pricing lurk. So are you ready to turn the table on asymmetrical information? To move from being at a disadvantage to holding your own in the consulting cost conversation. So stick with me and let's demystify this together because knowledge isn't just power, it's your best negotiation tool. Meanwhile, did you miss our latest episode? No worries, you can dive deep into a rich discussion anytime on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and for a deeper dive into the consulting procurement universe, you can check out consultingquest.com. There you can discover our white papers, our ebooks, and podcast transcripts um, that promise and I hope will enlighten you and inspire you. And of course, don't forget to spread this valuable podcast episode with your network. And please uh, leave us a review. Your feedback fuels our passion to continually bring you top tier content. Plus, we've got exciting hands on workshop lined up covering everything from mastering negotiations with consulting firms to crafting effective RFPs, keen to join, reach out to hcl at consultingquest.com and embark on this enriching journey with us. All right then, now let's begin. First off, consultants are in the business of selling time. This, think of it as granted you VIP access to the vault of expert knowledge and executive strength prowess. So, but here's the kicker. Every day a consultant isn't billing is like an airline flying with empty seats. It's an opportunity lost. So the fee structures, they're all about maximizing the seat fill rates in, or in consultant speak, utilization rates. Now let's dive into the consulting pricing arena, shall we? So time and materials, it's amount the consulting fees only and daily rates stand as the bedrock, particularly favored for smaller projects, the preliminary phases of grand ventures, or when it comes to interim management assignments. Uh, a when a consultant sets a daily rate and then bills you based on the actual days they've dedicated to your coast. You know, the, the math here is reflectionally straightforward. You multiply the day's work by the set rate, et voila, you have your total fee. So on the sunny side, this model is a beacon of transparency. You're only paying for the work done and the time spent, making it a neat, tidy package for project with a finite timeline. There's a certain comfort in knowing that every penny you spend is directly lead to tangible hours of work. But huh, here comes the twist. Every was has its thorn, and every billing model has its pitfalls. 
And sometimes efficiently isn't the consultant's middle name. So suddenly just a few more days become the mantra. And before you know it, the costs are mounting like climbers on Everest. The incentives you see are aligned more with the consultant's time on the clock than with hitting this project's milestones in record time. And what if the stars don't align? You're unavailable or some unforeseen hiccup helps progress. Well, the clock doesn't stop, but the work does, leaving you pondering the mystery of the universe, or at least the mystery of project management. <laughs> so here lies the rub. As much as this fee structure champions transparency and direct correlation between time and money, it places the lion's share is squarely on your shoulders, the client. So the journalist cost becomes as unpredictable as trying to forecast the weather, leaving you, dear client, to weather any potential financial storms. When you have flat fee and are stepping into deliverable based fees or at the common, more commonly known, the flat fee structure, we find ourselves at the heart of many a consulting firm's pricing strategy. Here, the consultant takes a good, hard look at the work ahead, assembles a crack team, and sets a price. This is not just a number pulled off from thin air. It's carefully calculated reflection of what it will cost for the team to roll up their sleeve and get the work job. Now, let's talk turkey. The beauty of the fat fee is that it puts the consultant in the driver's seat to navigate through the workload, even if it turns out to be more than anyone bargained for. And where did the consultant find their silver lining? You know, in the golden rays of repeat business and the art of resource optimization. It's not just about getting the job done. It's about doing it so well that goodbye turns into see you next time. All while ensuring the team isn't running a marathon in flip-flops. But as with all tales, there's another side to the story. What if the consulting team crosses the finish line faster than Houston Bolt in a 100-meter dash? The flat fee means you're paying for the marathon and not the sprint. But let's not forget the consultant's knack for packing their resources like sardines in a, in a team, right? That's their way of buffering against risk, ensuring that if things go through, they've got a little rust, right? But there's, there's the old bait and switch, painting a picture of an A team in the proposal, only to have you wondering if they're all gone on an extending vacation once the project starts. Yes. The resources allocated on paper might as well be unicorn for all the real work they do on your project. So while the flat fee structure sings a siren song of predictability and risk management, it's not without its potential for surprises. Now let's talk about retainer-based fees. So it's like having a doctor on call. Your dish model is perfect when you need ongoing part-time support without the rigidity of a full-time engagement. And how it's, that's how it works. The consultant and the client shake hands on a deal where that keeps the consultant on standby, ready to jump into action, a set on number of days per month, week, or even quarter. You know, the beauty of it, it's payment is typically arranged as a lump sum or regular monthly fee, regardless of how much or little, how little the consultant ends up pitching in during the time. Now let's peek behind the curtain at the perks of this arrangement. For starters, the consultant becomes something akin to a guardian angel for the client's organization, always hovering, always ready. For the client, this means guaranteed access to a brain trust on tap, ready to dispense wisdom or roll up the sleeve as needed. So it's an ideal setup for those times where path ahead is as clear as mud, with deliverables as stable as a horse of cards. The retainer model thrives on flexibility, adapting to twists and turns with the grace of a seasoned imp improviser. But of course, every civil lining has a cloud or two, and your consultant juggling multiple retainer gigs like a circus performer might not always place your project at the top of the picking order. After all, with your retainer securely in the pocket, where's the fire? This can sometimes lead to your pressing needs taking a back seat to more immediate, a bit less secure opportunities that come their way. And then there's the eligible retainer quandary. Some consultants view this as the golden ticket to paid commercial time, less about delivering value and more about ensuring that process is noted, like paid wallpaper, you know, effective, perhaps engage questionable. So there's some positive things to that. Let me share a little anecdote that to bring this up. So that a client once brought in a consultant, let's call him David M., you know, on a retainer to sprinkle some magic on their leadership team's effectiveness. So the result, 
subtle, yet noticeable. You know, no one could pinpoint exactly what David was doing, but somehow the ship felt smoother when he was around. So this is the retainer paradox. Sometimes the value is in the vibe, you know, not the visible. Well, all those pricing models are based on a simple formula, the daily rate multiplied by the number of days spent on the project. You know, this daily rate itself stems from a simple calculation, total cost divided by the number of billable days plus a margin for profit. It's a model that emphasizes the cost of inputs, clear, transparent, but perhaps not always perfectly aligned with the value delivery. Okay, so now enter stage left, <laughs> value-based pricing, a strategy that turns the spotlight away from the time and material vaults, focusing instead on the show-stopping performance of perceived value. Now imagine a world where consulting fees aren't just about the hours clocked in, but about the treasure chest of value unlocked. In value-based pricing, the golden rule is that the clients and consultants share a common quest. The more value created, the greater the reward for both. But as with any good adventure, there are different paths one can take. First off, let's talk about the road more commonly traveled by the giants of the consulting world. You know, the likes of McKinsey, BCG, and Bain, affectionately known as the MBB. These powerhouses tend to set their sights on a version of value-based pricing where the flat fees adjusted skywards to mirror the anticipated value. Think of it as tuning into a broader willingness to pay. The logic is pretty straightforward. The massive value these consultants are set to unlock couldn't be achieved without their Midas touch. And if the ROI of the project looks as promising as finding a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, say a return of a five times your investment or more, then it's all aboard the value train, right? Ever wondered why these firms play their cards close to their chest, refusing to break down their fees? Yeah, mystery solved. And there's a road less travel that's catching the art of forward thinking and game changing leaders. Value sharing models. Think of this at the consulting world's equivalent of entering a local bingo night with a modest buying, but with the jackpot holding the promise to turn modest investment into substantial gains. It's not just a different way of doing things, it's a strategic based on the transformative impact of the work with the payoff contingent of hitting it. Big. So let's break down the options on the table, shall we? First up, we have success fees. So this model in the consulting fees world, not to performance-based rewards. Here, the consultant's payout is directly tied, tied to achieving specific agreed upon outcomes. It's somewhat discretionary and reliant on the client's assessment of the consultant's performance, you know, with a cap set to keep expectation alive. Next, there's the percentage-based fees approach, particularly popular in the high-stake arenas or, or mergers and acquisition, but also in cost-cutting projects. You know, this model ties the consultant fees to a percentage of the transaction value or the savings dollar. The bigger the deal, the bigger the slice of the pie for the consultant. So it's a clear-cut case of the more value created, the more value shared. But then we have the model based on metrics and thresholds. This refined mechanism sets specific performance metric and threshold that when achieved trigger the payout of performance fees. It's a model that rewards hitting or surpassing particular milestones, making it an excellent fit for project where success can be quantified and measured against predefined standards. Now, as we wrap up our episode, it's clear that there, there is no magical key that unlocks the perfect pricing model. You know, the landscape is as varied as the businesses that navigate it, each with its unique set of challenges and victories. From the sturdy reliability of fixed fees to the high stakes of, gay, uh, of value sharing models, you know, the choice is new at, and what works for one may not satisfy another. The crux of the matter is context. Whether you're navigating through project with critical clear deliverables or wading through more ambiguous, territories, the choice between fixed and variable fees is pivotal. It's not just about the numbers, it's about aligning with the project's unique needs, the company's policies and culture, and the expectations of end users and internal stakeholders. So as we always remember that the art of choosing the right fee structure is akin to tailoring a bespoke suit. It's not just about the fabric, though it's important, but how it fits your unique contours. You know, your project scope, your organizational pathos, and the very people who make your company tick.
that's a beauty in diversity, in, in the spectrum of options available and, and the power lies in discerning which model lies best with your visions and, and values. Looking ahead to our next episode, we'll be decoding consulting prices and see to it what influenced the numbers. I promise you it's going to be an episode worth tuning in. So do join me for one next for that next week. Thank you for joining me today as we discuss the fundamentals of consulting pricing. Uh, your thoughts and feedback are always welcome. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or drop an email at hcl at consultingquest.net. You know I'm always game for a chat. Until next time, stay safe and keep up the smart consulting sourcing game. Au revoir for now and happy sourcing. You've been listening to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at consultingquest.com. Find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. For questions and comments, send an email to ellen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. See you next time.